All right, let's get one last video in before we get some sleep. We got the daylight coming in over here to the window. I should put a sheet up later when I need to film. But I want to get one more done just because let's get it done. Uh, 2024 AMC 10A Problem 18. It was also the 12A Problem 11. There are exactly K positive integers B with B between 5 and 2024 inclusive, such that the base B integer 2024 base B, which I'm just going to convert right now, it's 2B cubed plus 2B squared plus 4, is divisible by 16. So if I can divide 16 into this, it must equal a multiple of 16. So we'll put equals 16x where 16 is in base 10, normal. What is the sum? We have converted this to base 10, by the way, by using the base B to fill in the, the base work part of it. What is the sum of the digits of K? K being the number of values of B that will work. So now that we're all in base 10, let's just divide by two. We're gonna get B cubed plus B squared, uh, B squared? B, sorry, not, not B squared, B. Uh, it's late, two, two B plus four, yeah, no square on there. Okay, and B cubed plus B plus two. All right, uh, is equal to eight X now. So I need this number to be a multiple of eight. And what could I plug in for B? The thing is that in order for it to work, we only have to check the values compared to mod eight, meaning the remainder of B when divided by eight. So if I, for instance, pick a value like B equals zero mod eight, in other words, a multiple of eight, then that will not work because this would be a, a multiple of eight and you're adding two, so it doesn't work. If I check B equals one, uh, one plus one would be not gonna be a multiple of eight. If you check, the thing is, it's not just one that will do this, nine will be the same way, it also won't work because nine is also one more than a multiple of eight. This is just modular arithmetic. Uh, you can learn it in number theory, intro to number theory, around chapter 10 and on in that book from The Art of Problem Solving. Uh, next we'll check if B is basically congruent to two mod eight, let's say. Um, if you plug in here, you're gonna get a multiple of eight right here, plus two, plus two, not gonna work. If you check when B is congruent to three mod eight, uh, you're gonna get, uh, well, I could factor out a B from this and get B squared plus B or plus one. Does it really help? I don't know. Uh, nine plus one is 10 times three is 30 plus two, 32. Didn't really save any time to do that. You could just do 27 plus three plus two. 32 is a multiple of eight. And the way that it's going to work is if I take 11, for instance, as well, it will also work because 11 is three more than a multiple. Let's just check really quick. 11 cubed is one, three, three, one. If you don't know, use Pascal's triangle. The first five rows are powers of 11 uh, plus 11 plus two. So I've got one, three, four, two, one, three, four, four, and that will be divisible by eight. I remember a little trick for divisibility by eight. If the hundreds digit is odd, and this is divisible by four, but not eight, then the number will be divisible by eight. I mean, it's the last three digits, but that's how you can check it for odds. Had it been an even number, like one, two, then you need a multiple of eight in the last two digits as well. Um, you can figure out for yourself why that works. It's just something that I've memorized so this is gonna be divisible by eight as we said. Now I didn't need to check it, I'm just showing you so that you can see and confirm for yourself that it's a true fact within modular arithmetic. So then what? Let's check when B is congruent to four mod eight. If that's the case, this is 64, a multiple of eight, and that's six, not a multiple of eight. So that doesn't work. Let's check when B is five. If I plug in five, you're gonna get 125 plus five, which is 130 plus two, 132. Again, odd number, then I don't want a multiple of eight here, and I have one. 
So five's not gonna work. Let's check six. Six is gonna be a multiple of eight automatically because it's got a two in it. So two to the third, right? You have, you have two times three to the third. So when that three distributes, it'll be a multiple of eight times something else, but it's still a multiple of eight, okay? Now you put the six here plus two, you have a multiple of eight plus eight. It's divisible by eight when B is congruent to six mod eight. If you don't know what that means, I don't have time to explain it in this video, sadly. Mod eight is, uh, I mean, the gist of it would be that you're dividing by eight, and this is the remainder when you divide the number by eight. But all numbers that have a remainder of six when divided by eight will work. Just like 11 works, just like three and 11 both have a remainder of three when divided by eight. Okay, so B is congruent. If you wanna know again why that works, do the book Intro to Number Theory, or take my class. We go through that, that specific stuff. So then B congruent to seven mod eight, does that also work? Um, there's a few ways you could go about it, but uh, you know, seven, let's see, I guess I could use this one, this one right here. You'll have seven times 50, which is seven times 49 plus one, that's 350 plus two, you get 352. And again, that's exactly what we want. Odd number, not a multiple of eight, but yes, a multiple of four. So that's gonna be divisible by eight also. So you get three that work. You get when it's a remainder of three, six, and seven. However, we have to check this constraint they gave us at the beginning of the problem. So uh, three's not gonna work, but that doesn't mean 11 doesn't work, just the first value of three mod eight doesn't work. Now, if you check, what is 2024 divided by eight? Again, it's eight times 253, okay? And you can get that quickly. We did it earlier in the test, like way back in like, I don't know, maybe it wasn't this, uh, maybe it was AMC 10. Yeah, AMC 10, we did it for sure. Don't know about AMC 12. Anyhow, I can't remember anymore. It's eight times 253 is what this is. And so you can think of it as zero times eight plus three, not gonna work, but one times eight plus three, yes, going to work, all the way to 253 times eight plus three, no, too big because you're gonna go over that. So we'll stop off at 252 times eight plus three. So you're counting from one to 252 here you're gonna have 252 numbers that work. You're just using the multiplier of eight to count for you. It's starting at one, it ends at 252. It will do the job. And you know you're underneath this because that's 253 times eight and we're only 252 times eight plus a remainder. Now the other ones with the um, remainder six or residue six, residue seven, um, those are both gonna be fine because they're both already above. So you're gonna get all of those from zero times eight plus six, one times eight plus six, all the way to 252. Can I write? <laughs> My hands are tired. 252 times eight plus six. So you're going all the way from zero to 252. 252 minus zero plus one is 253. So if this is gonna work with 253 and that's gonna give you 253 cases for the same reason, you're just changing these sixes to sevens. Okay, then when you add all three of them up, just do 253 times three, you'll get 759. But don't forget, there's one case in this one that doesn't count. So rather than use this number, I just made it 253 for ease of computation and then subtracted the one off. So you'll subtract the one off, you will get 758 values of K. Seven plus five is 12, 12 plus eight, because we want the sum of the digits of K, and you're going to get D20. That's all I'm gonna have time to film today. It's time to get some sleep. <laughs>